Welcome to Adapt and Classing. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. This is the continuation of the video that I made on fractures. If you've not watched it, check it out. It deals with all the things you need to know for fractures. This is a continuation. It's just a build up on that information. If you need more, check Adapt and Class. You can subscribe and get free videos. I will start with the question. I will not answer it, but then we'll go and review the content and then come back and answer them. The nurse is caring for a, client, a patient with a femur fracture and back traction. Which of the following is a priority nursing intervention? Look at the answer choices and then think about them and then we'll come back and answer them. A nurse is caring for a pediatric patient with a bilateral Bryant traction. Which of the following findings mm -hmm. requires immediate intervention? Is all content answers? And that is what the ankles will ask you. Back traction and brain traction. What do you know about them? Answer choices out there. You can select your answer after the content. We can come back and answer it. First of all, what is a traction? If you have a fraction, we need to stabilize the fraction. There's a certain way we can stabilize the fraction. One of them is traction. Now, every fracture needs a traction. Well, some of them need traction. What is the function of it? It's to align the bone so that you can heal better. So alignment is number one here. This also reduces spasm. When you line, align the bone, the muscle around the bone will not go into spasm. You have pain after fracture, not because of the bone itself. The bone will give you some bone, will give you some pain. It has some nerves that run through it. But the most important pain that you get is from spasm of the muscle. So when you align the bone back to its original portion, we reduce spasm. It can also relieve pressure at the joint. It take away the joint pressure. That also give you pain. And it will prevent deformity, right? Correction of the deformity that has occurred as a result of the fracture of the bone. And then finally, immediate stabilization of the injury before surgery. Sometimes it's a gateway to surgery. We want to stabilize the wound so that it can reduce pressure so that we can get the bone already aligned and we take it to surgery. It's more palatable and more easy to align the bone in the right position. So those are five information you're supposed to know for the endless reason why we put patient traction. They're not going to ask you what are the reason why we put the patient traction, but you ask the question in such a way that that's what they mean. And then it's place a client in traction after fracture. What is the purpose of that? And those are the answers that you can use. You have to know what kind of tra uh, traction they have. There's a skin traction and there's a skeleton traction. You can align the bone or keep the bone fracture in a line by pulling pressure on the skin. One or on the bone itself. So the first one is skeletal traction. This is the most easy, self-efficient way of putting traction in place. It's non-invasive. It does not require you taking to surgery or anything like that. Um, and we use external devices like a tape, like a boot, like a strap to keep the skin straight and that will keep the bone in the right place. It's commonly used as a short-term duration, okay, before surgery and definitive care. So that's the purpose. What are type of skin traction? When they give you a question, watch and see if they're asking you about a skin traction or a skeletal traction. Example of skin traction is this back traction. You can see that the skin is being pulled, but there's no bone exposed. There's no nothing going through the bone. So it's wearing a boot and we're pulling from below. This is what we call skin traction and it's called back traction. You can't take the anklers without knowing if they're going to ask you a question on traction. Most of the time regarding skin traction is back traction. What is the indication? It's commonly used for hip fracture. So if you have a hip fracture, we can use back fracture. That's number one. Second is femur fracture. Number two, these are the three, two main function of back fracture. It pull the lower extremities in place and they allow the upper extremities in terms of your leg on the femur and the hip to be in line. And it can also be used for low, uh, and lower back pain to pull things. The muscle will be less in spasm. 
The mechanism is they put a boot, they wrap it around your leg, and they put the weight at the bottom, and you pull on it. It reduces muscle spasm, and it keeps the bone in alignment. Watch for the definition and the purpose. Number one, hip fracture, femur fracture. These are the reason why you can use a back fracture. What is the nurse supposed to do? Skin integrity, because we're pulling on the skin under the boot, you can't see it. And then the wrap, you have to make sure it's not too tight on the leg. Make sure the weight hang freely. Don't take them out without touching the floor, right? Keep that to prevent what? Compartment syndrome. So to do your neurovascular check, check for pain, your CSP, your parlor, your postlessness, your paresthesia, paralysis, and picrothermia. Do you think you're going to see all this? Do you think the ankles is going to give you all of this? No. The first thing you start seeing is what? Paresthesia. Before even pauses, pauselessness will be the last thing you would see. So if you see a patient who has a back fracture, back attraction, um, complain of what paresthesia, you should do something about it. Second traction. It looked like back traction. You can see, you can see the strap and the weight at the lower pulling on the skin, but there's additional one on the above the knee that is providing like a pulley. This is a rosso traction. It's different from back traction. It has additional one that is attached to the knee and is connected to that. It can also be used for femur, but in addition to the knee, okay, knee injury. Buck is very good for femur and hip fracture. Uh, Russell, if you have femur or knee fracture, it can be used for that. You see, it's holding pressure on the knee and stabilizing the lower portion of it. You see, the mechanism, you see, there's a sling to support the knee. There's support, there support of the knee and the weight hang freely to the lower portion of the leg and the boot. So it's pulling the leg and then at the same time, which is the femur aspect of it, and then supporting the knee. Next action is the same. Skin integrity and proper alignment. Make sure the weight are above the ground. Brian tra uh, traction. I don't call it Brian. I call it Gullers traction. It's easy, but whichever way you want to call it, Brian traction or Gullers traction. This is, you have to know, when the anklet is going to ask you, it's going to be specific. You see, it will be a kid, right? A kid, when? They have to have certain um, instruction. Their weight should be less than 30 kilos, right? Very, very young. They have to be less than two years, right? So those are the things you should pay attention to. They have specific weight criteria. You have to be less than two years old, okay? Your weight has to be 12 to 14 kilos, less than 12 to 14 kilos. And your weight, 26 to 30 kilos, so uh, pounds. So that's the range you want to be. So you want to make sure that at maximum, the individual has to be like 30 pounds, okay? Or at maximum, 14 kilos. They shouldn't be more than two years old, right? This is all less, less or equal to. This is the maximum weight you can put an individual. And these pediatric patient is used for femoral fractures. If they have femoral fractures and you're putting those two legs up, the key aspect is their buttock has to be off the floor. If they have congenital um, dysplasia of the hip, this is how we can put it in alignment. Use gallows traction to keep the buttock off the floor and keep it in alignment. Both of the leg has to be like 90 degrees Okay, the problem is of this weight, if you put it on a kid who is more than two years old or who is more than 30 pounds or who is more than 14 kilos, they're going to develop compartment syndrome. That's why you have to be specific. Nursing care, there is a risk of compromised and blood flow. That is why you have to be specific and make sure this is applied to the right patient. Keep the kid calm. They will be worried about it and avoid them from distracting the uh, um, traction. Skeletal traction. These involve pain in what? In the bone, you basically go into the bone. More invasive than skin traction involve inserting pins 
okay, wires through the bone to keep it in alignment. And this is can be used for a long term. Skeletal traction is a long term mobilization. Skin is a short term. Skeletal sometimes can be a long term and is more complex fracture. One of them is suspension traction, balance suspension. Even if you don't know and you see an answer choice, think about it. I have to balance something. You see the weight and I have to have suspension. The leg has to be in the sky, you see? So there's a balance. This is your leg and it's being balanced with weight on both sides to keep it in place. Most of the time, the patient will have something we call trapezes, trapeze. And this is what they can grab to get out of bed. Okay, that is the key aspect of it. It can also be used for femur fracture or pelvic fracture. The pins are insected and the weight are placed like a pulley. What was the nurse going to do? Make sure the pains, because they're going through the bone, they're sterile, right? Sterile, there's no signs of infection. You're checking, you're monitoring for osteomyelitis. You're making sure the weight are hanging off the floor and you're touching the bed. Those are your key. Cervical traction is ALO. Everybody know when you have a spine fracture, we can keep it in line. This is a, what? A, a skeletal traction because there's a pain that goes through your skull, okay? And used for fracture of the cervical spine. These ALO can be wear for a long time. It's a long time stabilization and the device is attached to a pain that goes through the skull and weight are, are tightened around it. You don't manipulate any of this. As a nurse, you should just have a wrench that can adjust the weight, but the nurse doesn't do anything. You teach patient how to use it, especially wearing a shirt under the, uh, the brace, but don't manipulate anything. The last one is this, okay? Uh, um, in, in terms of a halo, you, you, the nurse, you have to make sure you check for infection, alignment, and swallowing, and breathing because it can affect the. You can see how the brace goes through the chest. It can affect your breathing. The Dunlop's traction is easy. It's like a, uh, um, the other fracture for, for the kids, okay? The gallows traction. The, instead of the, your leg being hung in the hair, this one is your hand. And we use it for older patients when they have a fracture of the hand and we want to keep it in, in alignment, okay? And you can see the hand the hand is being aligned um, with the uh, pain going through the hand and then there's weight to keep it in alignment. And it's used for humerus or elbow fracture. Both skin, um, it, it apply both skin and skeletal traction alignment, but most of the time it's doing the job of a, as a skeletal traction, of course. Check for neurovascular status and keep the wig hanging freely. What is the next thing your board will ask you? What are your functions as a nurse when somebody has traction in place? Number one, neurovascular check. Check your piece, right? Pain, polar, post lengthening, paresthesia, picolithemia to make sure that there's no compartment syndrome. If you see any sign, you let the doctor know. You also have to maintain the traction integrity. Make sure the weight are hanging freely. They are not resting on the floor, on the bed, and you don't adjust the weight without the provided um, order. If you're moving the patient, the weight remain. You don't decrease it. You don't increase it. Weight remain. You also check for the skin, especially for skeletal traction. If there is a, a pain going through the bone to prevent what infection. Uh, you also have to check the pain side. Like I said, um, how do you clean it? You have to you have to be sterile. So chlorhexidine and sterile water is all you need. And you look for signs of infection, fever, swelling, drill, uh, uh, drainage, right? Proper alignment. Ensure the patient maintain proper body alignment in bed at all time to ensure that the traction is working. If they have to get out of bed, they can use the trapeze um, as I show you in a, a, a balance suspension. Major complication, as we already know, compartment syndrome. How would they tell you? The, 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 there's prosthesia, the leg is cold, uh, the individual requiring pain medication too much. They said the thing is too tight. All these are telling you. And of course, infection, you have to worry about the pain and teach the patient how to take care of the pain. These are 
key, simple, straightforward information about different kind of what traction. You can watch the video again and know all the different kind of traction so that you know how to answer the question. For this question, and let's care for a patient with a female primary child in box traction. Which of the following is a priority in this intervention, right? You have to bring your content, you ask yourself, what is a back traction? Is used for what? Is a skin traction, femur or pelvic fraction? Release the traction once per shift to prevent pressure. So you should not, what? It says a priority in this intervention. You should not release it. You should keep it in place no matter what, unless the doctor tell you to do that. Ensure the weight hang freely off the bed. That's good. Remove the boot every four hours to inspect the skin. Four hours is too much. You have to inspect the skin more frequently. You don't even have to remove the boot, but you got to check it more frequently, at least an hour. Elevate the head of the bed to 90 degrees for comfort. Too high. Okay. 30 degrees is fine, but now right answer is no man. It's B. And then scale for a pediatric client with bilateral and um, brine traction. Which of the following findings require immediate intervention? Brine traction, uh, traction is gallo traction. It's just for kids who have like pelvic injury and what do we all, uh, femur fracture. And uh, what uh, the, the buttock is up and both legs are up. Okay, it's a form of a skin traction. The legs are suspended vertically at 90 degrees, it does not require intervention. Both of them are happy exactly. The child toe are pink and warm. That is good blood supply. The child feet are cold and pale. It's not good. Compartment syndrome. The child is laying flat in bed with the hip elevated. But talk is up. Classic Bryant traction or Gallo traction. Thank you for watching. If you need more, check that down to class. This, you can click on the subscription and join and for free. Or if and then when you join and you like the free videos, you can become a member of our channel to support the channel to grow. Share the video, take care of yourself, and good luck in the rest of your career. And if you want content mastering, the crash course, live crash course, I have one coming up starting October 15th. Uh, you can check adapting class or Google HTTPE uh, colon forward slash. Um, www.adaptandclassreview.com and then you will know more about my channel. Take care of yourself. Bye.